Today we get to see how uh, iterators actually work on the inside and uh, how to make your own. And uh, you might remember that the basic thing about an iterator is it is a uh, collection that gives you one thing at a time. And the way you uh, get that one thing at a time is uh, you call the function next. And uh, most of the time you don't see this because um, when you're doing like a, a for loop, it'll do this automatically for you. But uh, if you need to implement your own iterator, then you have to uh, decide how the uh, next function is going to work. And uh, you see uh, in, uh, in documentation uh, this, uh, this next method a lot because it shows you uh, how, some, how an iterator works. And uh, here's, uh, here's the example from the book. So let's say you have, uh, you have these four characters. You have, uh, they're all chars. There's uh, some Korean, Ko, there's Japanese, Yanagi for Willow. And then, um, and you don't have to call an iterator right away. So here is, uh, you've got my vec. And then let's say you want to make a, uh, an iterator out of it. Then uh, you, you know, give it a name. Um, dot iter because it's a vec you can do that and then you have this uh, this iterator sitting around and then what happens in documentation is you see uh, a lot of this assert eek which we saw before so this will uh, this will not crash if uh, if these are equal so uh, when you call next it'll you know give you some and a reference to this and uh, it'll keep on going and I'm not going to type all this out because it's quite a bit so you just uh, call next, call next, call next, and then after that, it starts returning none. And in like in for loops and so on, that's where it'll stop. And one interesting thing about iterators is uh, when you define this next function, you can um, you can do all anything you want with it basically. So you decide, you know, is it going to return uh, some? Is it going to return none? And uh, the, the documentation here has an interesting example. And this is one where uh, it actually, sometimes it gives uh, some if it's, uh, if it's even, uh, otherwise it gives none. So it actually goes uh, back and forth. So it's, uh, an iterator doesn't have to be, you know, a bunch of sums and then a none and then, and then you're done. You can, um, you can just keep calling next if you want and you can have the iterator go over and over again. And there's even uh, an iterator here called uh, repeat. And this is, uh, all it does is it gives you the same item forever. So every time you call next, it gives you the same item. And uh, you can see this is useful if you want to do this, uh, this, this take method, which we used before. So you can do like iter repeat four, take four, and then you'll get four fours. And uh, you know, there's also the, uh, the skip method. So you can do like, uh, let my vec equals standard iter repeat, we'll say repeat six, uh, then we'll skip, you know, skip six times. That kind of doesn't make sense because we'll still keep on getting sixes, but, uh, you know, that's how it works. And this will give you, uh, uh, this will give you six sixes after skipping the first six. And who knows why we skipped the first six, but that's, uh, that's how you do it. So that is um, how iterators work, but there's one other thing you have to uh, do when you, uh, when you implement an iterator, and that's called the associated type. And this means, um, so you can't just say, you know, implement iterator for, you know, my type, and then, uh, and then write, uh, you know, the function next. Because uh, the question here is what uh, what is the iterator going to give? Because uh, you know the iterator uh, will be like a vec, for example. Let's say you're putting a vec in a vec of um, you know i32s, and let's say it's a vec of you know i32 and uh, I don't know u64s. Uh, but every time you call next. You want to return, maybe you want to return this, maybe you want to return this, and you have to tell REST the uh, associated type. And uh, this is, uh, the way you do that is you go to, um, you can see it here in iterator. If we look at the source right here. So when you're defining, um, when they define iterator here, they have this thing here called type item. 
and that means uh, this is the associated type and associated type means type that goes with the uh, with the trait so it's not the trait itself but it's a type that is uh, that is connected with it and it's the one uh, for an iterator that you want to uh, produce whenever you call next and so um, if you uh, so here they call it uh, item you can call it anything you want you can say type e type my type whatever and then if you look inside the uh, the methods here you can see that it is returning every time it's returning an option self item so this is a uh, you know this is generic because uh, you know item is not uh, it's not a real type here it's it, but you can see when you declare the uh, the type item then it'll get attached to self like this and so when you are doing the uh, you know, working with this uh, with this item, it'll return um, an option uh, self item, and so that'll be uh, let's see in our uh, in the alternate uh, iterator example here, they uh, they declared it like this. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is following the uh, the uh, the uh, the way they they wrote it out here with the. Uh, Let's see, let's go back to uh, trait iterator. Let's go back to the top. So you can see here, you have, uh, <clears throat> here's the iterator and then a type item. And then uh, over here, they are specifying the, uh, the type. So you can, uh, you can do that. And uh, that's, that's pretty common with an iterator. So here they're saying, uh, we're going to uh, produce an item and the item will be an I32. Or you can just say, type item and then you're working with uh generics and then you have to bring in you know what kind of what kind of traits do they have how do you work with them so uh so for the time being the easiest way to uh to make an iterator is to uh say type item equals and then you write in the uh the kind of item you're going to produce and then uh then you can keep things nice and, and concrete and then you uh and then you write your next function and then you make some logic and you say when you call next uh you know, in this case, it'll return some. In this case, it'll return none. And we are going to write uh, one of these in the next video. And in our in our example example, we're going to use pop. So we're going to have a uh, a vec of uh, you know some things. Let's say we have, uh, for example, three numbers, and then we're going to match. Um, you know, this vec we'll call it v dot pop, and this will return. You know, maybe it'll return a nine a sum uh, with a nine like that or maybe it'll just return a nine and that's uh, that's when it will stop so uh, we're going to write that uh, right now in the next video